So we're in this chapter four on force system resultants, and uh, this time we need to move into section 4.4. Four. So in section 4.4, four, we talk about the principle of moments. So let's just move into that, and then we'll move into moments of a force about a specified axis. So principle of moments, I tried to get to this last time. It's really the way that you want to be able to calculate the moments in 2D. You can actually do it in 3D as well, uh, also known as Baragon's theorem. So what you do is you resolve the forces into components, into the f of x, into the f of y, into f of z. And then you look to calculate the moment for each of the forces. So the f of x creates a moment about that point, and you usually can find that moment arm very easily. And then for the f of y, it's a different moment arm. And then for the f of z, it would be a different moment arm, but usually you can get those three moment arms pretty easily. And then you sum and you calculate then the resultant. So the, the, this makes the moment arms uh, a lot easier to calculate for a lot of problems. So let's jump into a problem. Here's a problem we've been solving, isn't it? It's this L-shaped. So use now this principle of moments to calculate the moment of the force about the point A. The point A hasn't changed locations. It's down here. So what we would do is we would say, well, I want to get an F of X right here, F of X. And I would want to get an F of Y, F of Y. Notice both f of x and f of y are play, applied at the same point. We didn't give it a name, but we could put a point, or well, we could call it point B. So f of x and f of y are components of the 350 newton force, and they're applied at the same point. Uh, so probably it's not that hard, but what is f of y? Wouldn't that be the magnitude of f times? Thinking of a right triangle right here. Wouldn't it be the f of x times the cosine of 30? And then the f of x is f, 350 newtons, times the sine of 30. So decomposing it into those two components isn't that hard. You've done that. And then we look, the line of action for the f of y goes here. Can you see the... Moment arm distance for the f of y, what would that moment arm distance be? Three meters. That's the moment arm distance for the f of y. And then for the other one, this is the f of x axis. You know, So it's, it's an axis that goes through the point along the same line of action as the f of x. And what is its moment arm distance? Yeah, 3.2. Mm -hmm. Or 2.3, sorry. I'm dyslexic, right? Read backwards. So what we do is we would say the moment about point A would be the sum. And here I'm going to write it uh, as f of uh, y, that component, times, let's say, d with respect to the y. Uh, you know, it's some moment arm distance uh, plus f of x times d sub x, okay. For this case, I have to pay attention to the signs, but this is a, a 350 newton times the cosine of 30 degrees times the distance of 3 meters. And then I look and I say, doesn't it want to make it rotate in the counterclockwise direction? So I could show that as being, I don't know, uh, in the clockwise direction and then put a negative sign on it. Or you could show it as being in the counterclockwise direction and leave a positive sign in front of it. All right. And then we'll continue. So f of x is my 350 newton force times the sine of 30 degrees times that moment arm distance of 2.3 meters. And which way does that want to make it rotate? In the clockwise direction. So let's leave this as clockwise. 
and leave this as a positive in front of it. Um, as I like to say, we basically, as an analyst, we take ownership. We take responsibility for the signs. All right. When you do the cross product, uh, basically, if you're just true to the math, the pluses and the minus work themselves out. All right. So we could run this. Um, let's see. I have that computed. It'll be uh, 506.8 Newton meter in the counterclockwise. So you could put it like that at the moment, about point A. Let's summarize. We solved the same problem three ways. We solved the, the calculate the moment around this point A using a scalar formulation where we just said this is the line of action of the force F and from that line of action get the perpendicular distance, that moment arm distance. It was a little bit of work to calculate the single D and multiply it by the magnitude of the single F 350 newtons and, and we, hit, we got the same answer in all three cases. The other one was we did a vector cross product formulation so we basically said, okay, we're, uh, we need to do R cross F. We got the F as a vector. We're going to do that in the next method too. And then we have the R from where? Uh, from the, the point A to any point along the line of action of that force. For this case, it was probably easier to come up to this point and wasn't that my R? We did negative 3 in the X and positive 2.3 in the Y. A lot of times, even though you could use to go to any R, basically the simplest is to go to where the point of application on my object is for that force. Okay. And then what we just did here, using the principle of moments, is we decompose that force so that we could then just calculate the moment for each of those components. So you say, aren't these very similar? They're very similar, yes. And they give the same result if done correctly. No errors. And this one seems to be the preferred method for a lot of students. But once you, I mean, if I was implementing in a computer program, I'd probably just implement and let the computer program take care of the signs and and, and uh, do a cross product. All right. This one I think is still very insightful. Don't lose insight because a lot of times you can tell. I can tell just by looking at it that the resultant needs to be in the counterclockwise. So I can use that to check my results. All right. Let's change it up. It's our, still our L bracket and say here's our point A now. And this is the point where the force is applied. It's a 400 Newton magnitude force. And they give a similarity triangle, a 3, 4, 5 triangle to get the orientation direction of that force. Could we calculate it using the moment arm distance, just a scalar formulation? Could we calculate it using the mathematical approach, doing a cross product? And could we calculate it using the principle of moments? Let me do this, let me pause. You pick which one to do, and then you run it and see how fast you can get the answer to this problem, okay? <clears throat> So uh, the first time you solve a problem, you go a little slower than after you build up uh, expertise and go a little faster. But I would decompose this one into the, the part going down, which is my f of y. And that has a magnitude of going down of four-fifths of 400. So that's 320 newtons down, isn't it? Four-fifths uh, four of 400. Yeah, it, and that's what I mean by make that intermediate calculation of 320 newtons. And then this one coming across at three-fifths of 400 uh, newtons is 240 newton. So I would actually encourage you to go ahead and make those, okay, intermediate little step calculations until you get really good. Then you can blaze through faster. And then for the four, 240 newton, 
What is that moment arm distance? D for the 240 Newton. Isn't it the 2.3? So what we'd do is we'd say, okay, I have 240 Newtons at a 2.3 meters. Because I think I saw some people and they would put the 320 Newton with the wrong perpendicular distance. And then, then I would work out the sign on this one. Which way does it want to rotate, make it rotate about point A? In the <coughs> counterclockwise. So I'll just put the arrow saying that's the direction it wants to make it rotate in the counterclockwise. And then we have uh, the 320 Newton. And its perpendicular distance is 5 meters. And it wants to make it rotate in the clockwise. And so that's our moment about point A. Now you just have to figure out which way do you want to consider the positive direction. If you want to consider this as the positive direction, then you would take and switch that and put a negative sign right there. Uh, what do we get for our answer? Negative? 1048 Newton meter in the it in the counterclockwise which or or equally well 1048 Newton meter in the clockwise either way yeah I think though if you're thinking back to my I and J, then K is coming out. What's the traditional positive way of rotating around that K, you know, Z axis coming out? You're going to use your right hand rule. And the traditional positive direction of rotation would be. But that's okay. I mean, you can put it clockwise as positive. All right, let's press forward. Oh, uh, should we solve it by using the moment arm? You can do that. And uh, you've got to <laughs> be good at right triangles to get that perpendicular distance. And yes, you can do it. Can you do it with the cross product? No problem. Probably that's the second easiest. Probably the hardest is just getting one moment arm distance. And the easiest is getting what we just did, two moment arm distance, decomposing that force into components, and then boom, 